Jadas ask, when I'm working, how do I combat olfactory fatigue? I think there's a lot of confusion around olfactory fatigue. I think it's the brain that gets tired rather than the nose very often. The one thing I would say, what tires your nose is alcohol. So most people spray perfume, sniff it straight away, and you're saturating the olfactive nerve with alcohol. Alcohol's an anaesthetic. When I'm working, I'm working fundamentally with oils. The oils have no alcohol in them. Although when I'm uh, then smelling as I blend, of course there's alcohol on the blotter, but I always wait for a moment or two for the alcohol to dissipate. In my opinion, the idea of popping a coffee bean under your nose is a nonsense. Uh, when I trained, we were never taught the idea of putting coffee under our nose. I literally sometimes will smell a hundred perfumes or a hundred oils in a day, and my nose never gets tired. So it's most likely a mixture, training, discipline, and really important, don't expose your nose to alcohol. Yakuba has asked me which scent took me this time, energy and dedication to be able to create. That's a difficult one to answer. I would say most likely there are two. One of them was Gardenia, which drove me absolutely insane and I thought I would never ever be able to create. And I'm really proud to say that when you smell my Gardenia, if you smelt the flower by its side, you would not notice a difference. The other one was Chypre Extraordinaire, I think I made more trials for this perfume than any other to be able to balance the Chypre base wrapped around this enormous note of tuberose where in the end you have the volume of the flower but without its sweetness. So without question, Gardenia and Chypre Extraordinaire. Elizabeth has asked, will I ever make a perfume that smells just like the jasmine candle? The answer to that is simply no. If you love the idea of such a volume of jasmine, I would suggest you try Scandal, which is loaded in jasmine and also tuberose, or you try a scent like Bergdorf's, where you have jasmine wrapped around frangipani. Also, in danger, you have an overdose of jasmine, but on a base which is very, very soft and oriental, with vanilla and sandalwood at its core. I hope that helps a little bit. So Diptac has asked me, when I'm creating, do I come with an idea and the notes, or do I just let my imagination flow and run? It's very, very simple. I have to have an idea of the end effect. That can come through a name, so maybe the name makes me think of a person that that embodies, or in the case of something like Lark May, I end up knowing that story, or the same is true of Diaghilev, that story, and the story inspires me. The story, or the idea, give me the idea of how the end scent will be, and then the rest is generally intuitive. I've always found the more I need to think, the scent doesn't normally come. The scents which come easily to me are the ones that I'm normally most pleased with. Josh has asked if I would explain the process I went through to create Diaghilev. I think that first you need to look at the person. Who was Diaghilev? Diaghilev was one of the most revolutionary people of the 20th century, and arguably without him, the entire Art Deco movement would not have happened the way we know it today. I wanted to make, make a scent which looked at the entire Chypre Accord, which came into being at the time of Diaghilev. And what did Diaghilev do? He turned his back on everything that had been there before. He invented modern theatre, and he came with this idea of bringing different creative forces together to make something much bigger than the sum of the parts. Because he was a visionary, he was somebody that looked forward, I wanted to do the same with this scent. So it's a very, very classic sheep, but I don't think it particularly smells old-fashioned. I find it fascinating how many people say when they smell it, oh, it's like Mitsuko, it's like Mitsuko. I think you can say that it is like any of the great classical sheep plays, because that's what it is. It has materials in it like prunol, which are more akin to fam from Rochas, so that jumped us forward by nearly half a century. And when you smell it, 
it is its own scent, so it's not something which is retrospective, it's an interpretation of a classical theme made in a modern way for tomorrow. So I hope that answers your question, Josh. Tom has asked, would I ever think of making a scent based around or for America in the way that I made Great Britain? I would say that I already have. I've done it in two forms, or three forms actually. I have a scented candle called New York. This whole idea was this busy, energetic place that has right at its heart Central Park, which is so unexpected. And so I wanted to make a, a scent which gives you the idea of the vibrancy and yet this tranquil area full of crazy, wonderful delights just to be discovered. I made the scent Love for Bergdorf Goodman that was made for nowhere else but for this great iconic store in America. And then also I made two scents, one called Bergdorf's and one called Goodman's, and in both of them I used the Mayflower. And the reason I used the Mayflower is because many people from Britain set over to America in a ship of that name. And so that whole story was about the connection between me as an Englishman and this country that I hold so dear to my heart, which is the United States of America. So, Eulas has asked, would Roger Parfam ever consider making samples or discovery sprays of some sort? The answer is very simple. We already do. Samples we don't make. We have very highly trained staff in the stores. I very often travel around the world to train those staff so we give our experience and expertise through the knowledge I share so when people come in we give the very very best recommendations we can. Samples themselves have to be paid for somewhere on the line, although I know it's not the end consumer. So we ended up deciding that we would make samples when we make a launch so that people who like my work can discover the scent. But once that launch has gone, the samples are finished. And as far as discovery atomizers, we have made them for years. If you go onto our website, you will find a section at the end of each uh, fragrance trail where you can click and we sell discovery atomizers every single scent I make. They're 7.5 mil, so it's a good size for you to really discover the scent. Or if there's something that you like but wouldn't necessarily wear, but you find the scent fascinating, it's enough that you can discover it over and over and over again. So I hope that helps. So Hannah asked a question, which is often in the debates and at the front of many fragrant lovers' mind, which is to do with something called IFRA, which is a governing body of our industry that looks at the type of raw materials that can be used inside a scent and those which shouldn't be used or should only be used up to a certain limit. Of course, one has to say that anything that looks at a consumer's safety has to be at the forefront of everybody's mind. Some of it, the regulations of it I find very difficult to understand. For example, a raw material like basil I can only use a certain volume of in a formula and then I have to not use it. The natural isolate that's inside basil we have to declare uh, to show that people who might have the allergy know on the label on the bottom called an inky list, so we declare it. But if you're a chef working in a restaurant, there is no regulation from anybody that stops the chef being exposed to so much basil oil, chopping basil up to make pesto. Um, I think that a lot of uh, people become frustrated because brands can't make perfumes the way they were because IFRA insists that we end up modifying formulas, but I also think that it is possible to modify a formula to make it almost feel like the original, but it depends whether the company is driven by wanting to keep the creation as near as it can to the original, or whether they use IFRA as an excuse to alter a formula because of price. And there are a million different uh, answers to that. It depends on the company. There's another body that nobody talks about, and I don't understand why, which is called the European Cosmetic Regulation, which is actually far more draconian than IFRA. So all you fragrance lovers, you need to look at that one, because it has more power than IFRA itself. So Rohit has asked, 
What emotion would I like to capture in a scent in a future creation like that which I captured in A Goodnight Kiss? So A Goodnight Kiss was all about the idea of capturing love, uh, the gentle tenderness of love in a scent. I think it's difficult because every scent creates its own emotion for the person that experiences it. So sometimes I have the idea of an emotion of uh, something tailored or something bright or something which is uh, lively, all of which are emotions, but uh, personal stories, very personal ones like The Good Night Kiss, I express through perfume very rarely because they are my personal emotions which I don't necessarily think other people could relate to. If you could capture one scent in a perfume, it would be the emotion of happiness. Because I think that happiness is such a positive thing, because it makes everybody around you hopefully feel happy. But I would hope that throughout my entire collection, that people find their own happiness or their own nirvana uh, through the scents and the experiences and the encounters that they have each time they wear something like I think when talking about happiness, what one can ask is what actually makes each of us happy, which of course is different, it's personal, in the same way our reaction to scent is personal. So the entire idea I had when I created Roger Parfum was to have this balanced palette of perfume. So if you love floral perfumes, there's a, a big selection, very varied in style, but if you don't like that type of perfume, you like saying more tailored, structured, the sheep then there's that there too. So if you find, when you find one of my creations that feels like it's a fit, a personal fit, it will end up making you feel good because that's what scent does. One of the things I've always said with perfume, when you find the right one for the wearer, is you literally watch somebody walk a centimetre taller without the need for a heel because they feel good about themselves and that makes them feel happy. So Jad has asked, will we ever see the return of the frosted glass bottles? The answer to that is no, not in the foreseeable future, and I have no intention to revisit them. So the reason we got rid of them, or discontinued them, was we felt that lots of people loved the colour in the sense, and I think it's really important to say the colours of these perfumes come from the natural materials, which is not generally true anymore in our industry, because so often, the raw materials are replaced with synthetics, natural raw materials are replaced with synthetics, and therefore artificial colorants are put in. I love the fact that these perfumes glow like jewels, uh, not just because of the caps, but because of the liquids. So these frosted bottles stop to seeing the beauty and the clarity of the, of the raw materials inside in the composition. And the other thing a lot of people complained about, and you can't keep everyone happy, is that they marked a lot. So if you end up getting fragrance on your finger and then you handled them, you ended up getting all these fingerprints over. So that was the reason we stopped them, and I have no intention of bringing them back. So Bradley has asked, what would I define as the ultimate luxury? And I would have to say, time on my own. Uh, maybe that sounds selfish, but my diary literally down to every 15 minutes, I am here, I'm doing that, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. My diary is full basically until the end of this year. We already have some things in for next year. So when I have free time, I like to really do nothing other than have time for myself and time with my partner, Peter, who I've lived with for a lifetime. So peace, quiet, and time for me. That's the ultimate luxury. Injustice, prejudice, and hubris. I'm on my way for this filming. Roy Kalmanovich came into the store, didn't know he was coming, he didn't know I was here, and I sat with him for a while to find the perfect scent for him. This is my favourite colour cap, the one from Britannia, after the violet. I love decadent holidays. Positano in the south of Italy. Now Voyager with the wonderful line, let's not ask for the moon, we have the stars.